So with the help of Python in this Google Colab notebook, I'm going to explain the process of QR decomposition or QR factorization of a matrix uh, of whose columns we have mutually independent uh, or independent set of column vectors. And we're going to change that basis then because if they are mutually independent, remember their basis usually of some subspace because A is not squared. And we're going to change that basis so that each new column vector is going to be orthonormal. So they're all mutually orthogonal and they have unit length one. And to get that, we're going to go through what is called the Gram-Schmidt process. And that gives us this matrix Q. And it will also help us to develop this matrix R, which is upper triangular. So we have this multiplication of an orthonormal matrix times an upper triangular matrix. And that's going to give us back A. So we've decomposed A. We factorized A. So what I'm going to assume is just that you have knowledge of vector arithmetic, just how to add vectors. How, uh, how do you project one vector onto another? And we usually use the dot product for that, if you remember. Linear independence, those are the column vectors of A. What the rank of a matrix is, because we can use that to help us just to uh, make sure that our column vectors in our matrix A are all linearly independent. Orthogonality, what it means to be orthogonal, and then also the normalization of a matrix. So if you have some idea there, um, it'll be easy enough to follow along. The packages that we're going to use in this notebook, I'm going to explain it to you using the SymPy or the symbolic Python package, makes it very easy to uh, to do uh, symbolic mathematics uh, or just um, normal um, numerical mathematics as well. So I'm going to import the matrix function, that's uppercase M, and the init underscore printing function. And if I call that function, it's going to allow uh, SymPy to express LaTeX as the output of your computation. So let's run those and uh, set that uh, init printing. So here's our example matrix, three columns, three column vectors there, 111, 011, and 001. And that's a basis for R3, or three space in this instance. But we want to change that basis for uh, three column vectors that are mutually orthogonal and they are of unit length, as I mentioned. Of course, we have to first make sure that these three are linearly independent, and we'll do that. But first, let's create the matrix. I'm going to use the matrix function from SymPy as a list object. I'm just passing all nine values. And then I'm calling the reshape method and putting in 3 comma 3 so that we have a 3 by 3 matrix. And if you can see the printout there is using LaTeX, so it's nice and crisp, lovely design there to the printout. So let's just make sure that these are linearly independent column vectors. And one way that I can do that is just to do row reduced uh, or, or, or use uh, elementary row operations and gauss jordan elimination just to make sure that we get to reduce row echelon form. And if I use SymPy, the matrix there, and uh, then the RREF, row reduced echelon form method there, it's going to uh, uh, do elementary row operations, Gauss-Jordan elimination. And what we're going to end up with is the, is the identity matrix. And what that means, it's only the zero vector that is a solution to, this homo to the homogeneous system involving this matrix A. In other words, those three column vectors are linearly independent. The other thing that we could do is also just call the rank method. So a dot rank, open close parentheses, and that's got to give me three. Um, we, it spans all of three space, so they are linearly independent. Now, just to show you, if you want to do QR decomposition, uh, you can use the dot composition there, the decomposition method on my matrix. So there's my matrix that I create, and then I'm just calling QR decomposition on, on, uh, on that matrix. And that's going to give us uh, two matrices back, which I've named Q and R, and you can see Q there, and you can see R. And you can, we're going to see that Q, uh, all these column vectors are orthonormal, so orthogonal and of unit length, and then we have R, this upper triangular matrix. Just to verify that Q times R is back to A, I'm saying Q times R, and I get back to A, no problem whatsoever. So let's do this by hand. Of course, when we have uh, our set of basis vectors, we're just going to choose one of them to be the start one, and all the others subsequent to that must be orthogonal to this first one. So since we have our first one there, we can just use it, and this is what we're going to do. So A sub I, that is just going to be the column vectors, my initial set of basis vectors, U sub I, 
that is going to be my new ortho orthogonal set and if I normalize it in other words divide it by its norm then I'm going to get u hat sub 1 or u hat sub 2 that's the orthonormal version of that so they're going to be mutually orthogonal but they're also going to be of unit length so let's just uh, create a1 a computer variable that I'm using here for a sub 1 the first column vector inside of a and I'm just using square bracket notation there all the rows in column 0 and that's just going to give me the 111 the first column 111 and I'm just going to set that to be u1 I've got to take one of them to start off with as long as the others then are mutually uh, orthogonal orthonormal to u1 of course as I said we have to divide by the norm of u of u1 or a1 I can call it anything here um, seeing it's the same thing so I'm just calling the dot norm method there so if we take the norm of u1 or a1 uh, we see it's square root 3 so if we take a1 and we divide it by the norm of a1 I'm going to call that u1 normalized so it's now normalized normalized so from 1 1 1 we go to square root uh, 1 over square root of 3 or square root of 3 over 3 for all three elements now I just want to remind you of this how we do a projection so if I take a projection of, of vector a sub 2 uh, onto a sub 1 it is this dot product of the two of them divided by the norm of the one that you're taking the projection to times that vector let's just have a look at a google drawing here we have a google drawing there's my a sub 1 so it's not the one we're dealing with in this problem it's just a schematic and there's a sub 2 the blue one to the top and if we use the projection remember that's an uh, orthogonal projection which leaves me with a pink vector here along a1 which is the projection of a2 onto a1 but because it's an orthogonal projection u2 is actually very nice because it is orthogonal to a1 and we've just set a1 to be u1 and now we have something that's orthogonal to it just given to us such that this projection the pink at the bottom plus u2 has got to give me a and that's what we see there a sub 2 that's the projection of a2 onto u1 plus u2 and if I get u2 on its own then I have everything I need to calculate u2 it's a2 which I'm given in the problem and it's very easy for me given that I have u1 because we decided u1 is a1 I have been given a2 so to take the projection of a2 along u1 is very easy and just that simple algebra leaves me with u2 so that's what we're doing here we're saying the projection uh, of a2 along u1 or a1 then doesn't matter is a sub 2 dot product with a with u sub 1 divided by the norm of u sub 1 squared times u1 so let's extract a2 there as the second column beautifully we can see it there uh, rendered to the screen that's just going to be our second column 0 1 1 so what I need to do is just to take this uh, dot product divided by the norm squared of u1 multiplied by u1 and you can see it right there so how to do the dot product you take one of your vectors a sub 1 use the dot method so dot dot and then pass this parameter or argument the other vector that you're interested in so if we look at the proje projection of a2 onto u1 again I'm giving it very simple names there so that I can remember if I see this code down the line or give it to someone else sort of can figure out what I meant by this computer variable name and it's two thirds two thirds two thirds and now as I said very conveniently we have this orthogonal decomposition basically in using that uh, projection onto the other vector and that's what I have here u2 plus the projection of a2 onto u1 it's exactly what we had in the picture that's got to equal a sub 2 and all I'm doing here is just putting in the definition so it's going to be u2 plus in this middle bit here a sub 2 dotted with u sub 1 times the norm of u sub 1 all squared remember that's the projection there and that makes it very easy let's you know u2 is just going to be a2 minus this projection that we calculated so lo and behold there's u2 and all we want to do now is just to normalize it or divide it by its norm so u2 divided by the u2 norm and there I see my second my second uh, new basis vector and it is going to be orthogonal uh, to the first one and it's orthonormal uh, seeing that they're all uh, in one so what I've shown you in five that's sort of the most the 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 what you have to understand or at least just memorize it put in your head but it's easy enough to understand 
USAP, any of the ends that I'm looking for. We've just looked at USAP 2, but next up we're going to look to USAP 3. Well, just as we had A sub 2, where we just said A sub, uh, A sub 2 minus the projection, it's going to give us U2. We do exactly the same here. So it might be U, uh, U sub 1000. That's just going to be A sub 1000 minus. And then we're going to do the summation. We're going to start I equals 1. And then we're going to go all the way up to N minus 1. So not all the way up to N. And if you think about all the ones from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4, this U sub N better be orthogonal to each one of the ones that it came before. It's got to be mutually orthogonal. So it's got to be orthogonal to each and every one before. And that's how we do this. That's why we have the summation there. We have to now take A sub N. So if I'm looking at U sub 3, I take A sub 3 minus, and then A sub 3 dotted with each of the previous ones. U sub 1, U sub 2, only up to 2 because we only go to N minus 1. So it's got to be mutually orthogonal. So we, we've got to have each one of those mutually orthogonal ones in there. So if we look at uh, A sub, just the projection of A sub 3 onto uh, U2, and then also the uh, projection of A sub 3 onto U1. So A sub 3 has to be projected onto the one before and the one before that. And you see the equation there, such that it's very easy for us to write the code. There's A sub 3, and then there's the dot product of A sub 3 onto U2. There's a sub 3 onto u2, and we see that. And then a sub 3 onto u1, we see that one, those ones. And now we're just going to subtract it from a sub 3. And you can see the algebra very clearly there, because just as we had in the two-dimensional case, um, that you can add the two vectors to get to the final one, this is what you've got to do. Now it's orthogonal to two other uh, vectors, so you better bring them both in, which makes it then very easy through simple algebra for us to calculate u3. And all we have to remember is to divide it by its norm. And that's going to give us the normalized version of that. So now we have it. We have the whole of U. Remember, we're just calling it Q because it's QR decomposition. Uh, I'll call it U hat here. And I'm just using the matrix function and putting all three column vectors uh, next to each other. And just to show you that they're all mutually orthogonal, I'm going to take each pair of them. There'll be three pairs. And I'm just going to do the dot product between each of them. And they better all just be zero because the dot product of orthogonal uh, vectors, this is zero. And we see zero, zero, zero. If you use NumPy, it's going to do it uh, not symbolically like here. It's going to use uh, numerical calculations. And it's going to have a little bit of an overflow error. And you might not get exactly zero, but you're going to get something times 16 or 17 to the power negative one. And that really is the zero. So we can see here all three of them are mutually orthogonal. And there's R. This is how you calculate R. This is an upper triangular matrix. And you can see the pattern repeating. It's just the normal dot product. And that's how you would calculate R. Such that if you then have Q and R, you can get back to A. Now, up till now, what we've done now is we've looked at a very, very simple case where we had this matrix over a field of real values. So, this is, in essence, then not the full picture. You've also got to consider the field of complex numbers. And how do you do that? So the dot product, we just use that because we did, we were just talking about uh, Euclidean space here. So that wasn't a problem. But as soon as we go to other spaces, as soon as we inc uh, include uh, complex numbers, for instance, remember, it's not the normal dot product we're talking about, but the inner product. So you've got to define the inner product between the two vectors in the case that you're doing. And as long as you take not the dot product, but the inner product of all of those, nothing changes. So in then short, that is QR decomposition using the Graham Schmidt process. It really is an easy process. You just have to do a couple of, 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 uh, of them and just not make a silly mistake. But it's really easy, easy to remember. And it's all about the projection of one vector onto another. But to remember that you have to keep on adding them in as much as every new one that you calculate has to be orthonormal to all the ones that came before.